hell with everything. And where we are, we're, that was really quick. That was, <laughs> wow. Okay. Hello, America. <laughs> Hello. It's December 19th, 2021. Welcome. And I am Michael Anthony, your host on the dark side <laughs> is David Parker. He'll be stepping in shortly. Ah, now, what is this? The Alabama white thing or an albino Bigfoot from the early 1900s and records around the 1930s. We've heard of this. It moves like a cat when it's on all fours. So it is cat like in ways. And as the story goes, it has a head similar to a cat, but a body of the Sasquatch stands approximately seven to eight foot tall. Is it flesh and blood or something supernatural, dimensional? And I know that's a loaded question, right? But what's out there? If you have a story, we want to hear it. America, always remember to fight back. Welcome to America Disclosing Uncensored. Let's open this vault together from the East Coast to the West Coast, beyond dimensional and interdimensional. It all seems to fit like that. Whether it's Bigfoot, paranormal, UFO, skinwalkers, Flying like creatures of men, shadows, orbs, has it all played a part of the same phenomena? Or is it all part of these 12 dimensions sharing our space in this place? What have they not told us? Why won't they tell us? What hand of man? played a part in all of this. Are there natural doorways into dimensions that can explain this? Or in ways do we do this? We meaning the deep dark state projects. We don't know. We don't have the need to know. About all that is secret. What does our government know? Don't expect them to ever fully disclose that information. It's just too dark. And we must ask, why do they spend so many millions of dollars into all this research and developments and more based upon, in their own words, created by the CIA, conspiracy theorists. Now with me from the dark side is the infamous David Parker, the one who lives amongst them, as in Bigfoot. Hello, David. Welcome in. Any weekly updates? Yeah, uh, there's been a few incidents here. We've had like three. Now, one night, my boy stepped out on the front porch, and he heard one of the males do a really long howl for like 35 seconds, is what he said. And, you know, by the time you grab the recorder, they don't do it again. Kind of, <laughs> you know, you, that happens a lot. You'll hear like a really cool call that you've never heard before. And they'll only do it once. You go in, you try and grab the recorder and everything. And then by the time you get out there, it's nothing. So that can be pretty frustrating at times. And then... uh Marion had let the dog out, and there were two females kind of calling back and forth. One was off on the next ridge to the east of the house, and the other one was further, was kind of north and west, kind of near where my pond is. And then uh, two days ago, Ralph was out grabbing some firewood, picking up logs, and... Uh, he got a visual on little Andy was watching him. The neighbor's dogs gave him away. They ran right up to him. Hmm. And that's what we've had going on in the past week. So and I haven't really been out too much because it's been pretty cold. Right. We are getting into that uh, off and on kind of, well, at least for here in Pennsylvania, it's going up and down. You know, today's kind of a cold spell day and whatnot. Um, you know, the other day also, uh, and, and interesting what you brought up there on what's going on on your land that you're sharing amongst those big hairy beasts. Um, 
you know, I posted something and I really wanted to see how people would just address the topic. Now, it's still a small room in creation and people are getting to know uh, what's this dark radio network project? What's this all about American disclosing uncensored? As people learn, I want to put things there because I want their narratives and opinions. But at the same time, I wanted to know how many people could address it and how many believers are out there that may just want to believe versus ones who are really trying to research and understand a picture when they look at it. So hats off to you because I, I didn't know who was going to catch it, but you did immediately. You were like right there. Come on, man. That's a cutout, you know. And, and you know what? The truth is I make them. And I have made all these different types of, of woodsy things, like this little bird that I got sitting right here. Oh, you can't see it. Anyway, yeah. he's, he's more of like an eagle on pedestal. What, what, well, actually, maybe you can't see it. I don't, which way does the camera go? I don't know where it is. Here, I'll pick it up. So I can always make a Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I do things like that with a chainsaw. Um, I would use the jigsaw to make some of those uh, hairy critters. And, you know, people strap them to trees and whatnot. They want you to put legs on them like they're going to come on. The, the wing catches them, they're done. You know, you got to screw them in place. And uh, But people do narrate around all these this false pretense. And then I saw that you had something posted as well that showed something about Boris Karloff and Frankenstein, and I think you were trying to point out something that somebody utilized a face to do something. Can you explain that? Okay, it's a, it's been going around again, but back in 2018, I debunked it. I would looked at it, and when I clicked on it, there was this face, and the face had been photoshopped in there, but it was partial face of Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster, and they're trying to pass it off as a Bigfoot. Mm. So they used Frankenstein's monster to create their monster, you know. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> Up in Pittsburgh here, I was pretty fortunate as a kid to get involved with movies and stuff. Production, picture cars, locations, different things like that. And, and I got to know a lot of people. And um, there were things that went on in, in Pittsburgh that I was involved in that go beyond that. And I met a lot of people through it. Um, one of the gentlemen that I met was uh, and got to know was Tom Savini a little bit. He was the horror master of faces and motion picture for a while that, of the new age in the like early 80s, late 70s. Um, the creator of many, many uh, faces and uh, worked in like, I think, Dawn of the Dead and some of these. I, and I might have the movies mixed up here, but some of the things like that where uh, you see people goring on uh, body like parts and stuff, you know, and the creativity of how they were narrating the, the scenes and so forth. And uh, let me tell you something when it comes on camera, it looks a lot different and a lot more gory than when you're looking at it, but you do, you do get the element of it. So I, I understand, and I only bring that up because I have seen some people, very special, talented people who, you know, created these kinds of things. And they did really good work at it. They really did. His name's Tom Savini out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right. So, you know, you had some other things up that you wanted to talk about and uh, put out. And we were talking a little bit in our little narrative of the green room there through the week, uh, portals and sounds and so forth. So, and, and how frequencies work. But I wanted to bring something up to you because of something you went through. And it made me just wonder. Do you ever think that you might on your property have some type of vortex or portal? Because you said, and I'm not trying to put you on a spot. This is just gentlemen talking. You said that um, you felt while being addressed in some mannerism, um, this uh, infrasound that uh, we, we know about and uh, believe in ways that the uh, Bigfoot is capable of doing, could that be possible also to where some people feel like they may be watching, walk, walking, excuse me, into a natural element of maybe a portal? Because we hear some of the same things. <laughs> you can feel um, almost the same. So I was just wondering, is there any chance that you think you might have like some type of 
<clears throat> veil that that opens or do you, do you think it's all Bigfoot related, period? Well, I'm not sure about portals. I've never seen one, walked through one, experienced one, but I have had the, been hit with the infrasound on two occasions. The first time I know it was an adult male because I could smell him and I tried talking to him. And he hit me with it twice. And it was a... <laughs> I mean, I got hit hard with it. It made me physically shudder. And it was, I don't know if there was a telepathic component to it or not, but it felt like anger and fear, hatred and doom all rolled into one and hit me with it. And a after this, you know, because I was trying to talk to the Bigfoot and said, you know, can we live in peace? It was when I was first encountering them. Right. I don't want to hurt you or your family, and I don't want you to hurt me or mine. And that's when I got hit with it twice. And after the second time, I went in the house, and I didn't sleep all night. I mean, I, I sat in the living room in the recliner, and I had my 357 and my Mini 14 with 40-round mag in it and a spare. Because I thought, well, if anything going to try and come get me, I'm going to give it whatever I can. I ain't going down without a fight. Right. And it left me kind of freaked out. Now, the second time it happened, it was by a young one. I believe it was the one I call little Andy. Cause I had, I had been burning some trash after dark when the wind went down and I could hear the Bigfoots making their calls as they were moving in the direction, kind of coming towards my property. So I went, and sat out on the deck and I'd shut off all the electronics and stuff in the house and I could hear the kitchen window kind of vibrating like from a bass sound you know like when you got a TV close to a window and the bass sound will make the window rattle or you know like when them kids oh, yeah. come by with their stereos going boom 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 how it makes the windows rattle I could hear that but from my place it's like two miles through the woods before you get to anybody else. So where is this bass sound coming from? And I didn't hear it. But, you know, it was the kind that makes a hair on the back of your neck stand up. And then all of a sudden he took off because he was standing by my garage like 25 feet away peeking around. And that was a juvenile male. And he took off so fast. He went across the driveway, across the what I call the wood yard area where I cut firewood and then, you know, across the ditch, across the road, over a five foot barbed wire fence, didn't miss a step. The heavy footsteps were coming down and they were coming down so hard and fast. It almost merged into one. Then he got way out there and broke a big limb. But, you know, I mean, he took off like devil was after. Him. And that's when I let him hear my mean voice. And I told them to quit trying to scare me, and they've never hit me with it again. That was probably seven years ago. But I, I, you know, did the mean voice. You know, you quit trying to scare me. Right. And they've never hit me with it again. Like when I do. This is Studio Tent Broadcasting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I hear you. All right, so, okay. Um, my theories were just trying not to debunk anything but just to bring reality into theory um, from theory. So, all right. You know, you've heard about things when it comes into ghostly encounters and too. So you, I, yeah. I, I already know you're, you're going to get this. And again, we'll, we'll see some shows out there or some people tell of experience. Uh, these experiencers say at times they're in, you know, a uh, paranormal investigation and they happen to go into a dark room or whatever, or just any scenario anywhere. And they will experience like they feel like something goes through their body or in fact, they walked through something. And it just makes me wonder some hot spots, and they may not all be related, but they may have similarities to them. Like where, how the ability from the other dimension can vibrate that type of low frequency to that causes you to become disorientated and more and um, not just all based upon demonic possessions or hauntings, 
But in any type of haunting or place of uh, paranormal actions like that, people describe this very similar feeling. So is it all because they're from one place possibly or their intelligence um, or just coincidentally um, similar to other factors that we're looking into? Do you get where I'm coming from? You know, yeah. no, I think part of it could be sound, but who knows? I mean, there is so much that we just don't understand about our reality or universe. Right. When you look at, there's, there's a lot of different things. Like people claim aliens come from another dimension and that, or time. I don't know, but it's certainly possible. I mean, you look at all the leaps that and bounds that man has made with his technology in the past little over a hundred years. It's quite a bit. Oh, yes, it is. It is indeed. And, you know, you bring up a really good point of something that I would love to just, you know, blast um, of a statement that came out in the late 1800s from the Rockefeller family that narrates this whole charade that we're living. Um, but again, we're trying to narrate through other things as we peek and uh, share some other issues of America as we go along. And I think that's the best way to do it, to keep people interested as to why they may step in to watch us and so more because of where we share it. All right. So um, <clears throat> I thought that was just a, a really cool narrative to talk about because paranormal, these, this type of thing, what you experienced. Um, and, you know, in ways, even though there are some proofs, some things caught on camera. Many things get caught on camera are never clear enough for anybody to be happy enough to really be able to look at it and say, oh, 100%, that is the real deal. Um, in some cases, you know, the Patterson films, always, films always, and Ghibli's are always going to come up first uh, of, you know, most authentic. And I guess there could be other things out there. And again, America, if you're interested, please post and share if you want on America Disclosing Uncensored. Check into the room or always look up. Now at 59,000 members, Bigfoot, yeah, Bigfoot, I'm sorry, Bigfoot, the real truth. Exactly. Is that what it is, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure because I don't want to fall ill. Um, I'm going to give good representation. So check that out. It is now like every three days gaining 1,000 new members. And that's incredible. So people are in search of getting away and going back to roots in this time that we're living in. And I'm glad to see that they're trying to open up their mindset to take in more and learn more. Because we, we got a lot to give you and share over the next through, through the winter, through the winter. So you're going to have to come in and check us out. All right. So, yeah, I, I, you know, again, I brought that up just for the purpose of comparable comparison and whatnot. Um, so. Sound waves, things you, you cannot hear that do change the fragment of our own well consciousness, I will say. Similar to what we also know about weaponries of flashing lights, water dripping on your forehead, all these weird things, chantings, humming, and more, and then acoustics from a time that were, were created so well by and with certain chants um, have certain types of influences of power. Is, is that kind of like what you wanted to share on tonight? Well, sure. I mean, even when you look in the Bible, we'll just use that as a reference to begin. Okay. Look at the walls of Jericho, how they came tumbling down. They had gone marching around the city. They had been saying prayers and they blew trumpets and the walls fell down. Just like the Tibetan priests with certain chants and blowing of trumpets were able to move a boulder. Remember that article I sent you on that? Yes. And we did, you did post that as well. So everyone can see that, correct? No, I didn't. I just oh, shared I thought it, I thought that came through. 
Well, All right. I, my I apologies. I, I believe I just shared it to you because, uh, you know, it was somewhat related to you know, all the different things with sound, it's a science that needs to be gone into in a lot more detail because maybe that has something to do with the way they built the pyramids and were able to move such megalithic stones. You look at stones that are 100 tons and yeah. you're telling me that people move that without the wheel? Well, how? I, I know. I know. It's incredible, right? And what was there, like, was it 600 million tons and over 13 acres? to construct that. And it's like nearly what, 500 feet high. I mean, I don't have every dimension on down. The, and then not only that, the engineering of it is yeah. just mind boggling how back in the day, I mean, look at, even if you think about what we do today and honestly, uh, man's hand ha has in the past shown us how brilliant their workmanship is, but to, bring it forth as they have and the way they have says to me, anything's possible because when we look at things right now in modern days and times, and we look back a hundred years, 200 years, and you see some of these early and even older churches and synagogues and more, I mean that the Templars did and so forth. These were true workmen with a skill and, and a vision. that's just mind blowing and we sit here at times and think, well, what happened in the last hundred years? Damn it. <laughs> we had some rock stars out there already doing stuff, too. We, we must never forget that. Although brick and mortar is much different from when we see technological uh, things and aerospace and more and how that's all taken place. So there are going to be some divides and separations of opinions, you know, in my mind and thought. But, yeah, you're right. Um so we know that they practice things. And wasn't there even a couple stories where a couple monks were actually able in some way, whether it was through uh, uh, mind control or something, they were actually able to levitate, levitate a couple inches from the ground. And there was records of that happening where people witnessed the, these events. Yeah. And Tibet. Yeah. I mean, they were the Kings when it came to this. I mean, they really practiced it. And, um, Again, you know, it really you have to bring this kind of stuff to the table to, to debate it and discuss it because, um, again, they were fascinated with sound and, per, and and a perfection with it as well, just in their own architectures of what they built. And it, there must have been something more. And I wonder, you know, with history not being so forward and proper uh, as far as um, the faculty of uh, teaching. Um, was it why? Could they do something while they were in this church and make, make a, a cup rise by doing it? Are they not telling us some of the secrets that way? But getting to these big stones and, it, and the outside, make, creating an outside frequency to move them, um, I don't know. I guess it's very plausible and then wasn't the other thing, too, if I may bring up just quickly, because I don't want to be chewing all the words here. You're you're as important as I am in talking here. Didn't these stones all come from like five, six hundred miles away as well? Well, like for Stonehenge, I know a lot of those. They came from Wales. Right. And how did they get them? I mean, did they you'd think the easiest way to get them anywhere it would have been you know, put them on some kind of a barge and float them over water to get them moved. But still, they still had to go across quite a bit of land. And how did how did they do that? I mean, these people without any technology to speak of. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's I can't come up with a logical answer except for the like you said, you shared the barge stuff. Uh, theory there and that's true and correct because we even know the what is it the ovulus in washington dc that came from all the way in the dry sands all the way up by barge i mean you know um and th there's stories about how that all took place and whatnot out there if anybody wants to research that because it is pretty cool um when you think about it but when you dry dock as you said then you're, you're faced with this land them over there 
uh, sands everywhere for the most part. No hard pavements unless they act, there's things still buried under the st- sands that we can't see, like maybe the second sphinx that they don't really talk so much about, um, or the seven levels under um, the pyramid that we know does have proof of existence there. It's just no one's allowed to look into the into it. No one will sign off for anybody to go past that crypt um, that's downstairs. And, and I believe in um, level one, where the theory is there's really not a body in it, and there never was. It just hides another staircase or ladder system that takes you down and to the uh, remainder of the seven levels, which would be six more levels after that one. So there's a lot of information out there that's talked about that way. But again, we're talking about sound and frequency and uh, making articles move and different things like that. And vibrations, yes. Um, in some ways, they're good. It depends on who it's for. In other ways, it, it has purposeful uh, abilities to maybe build. I mean, look at the one man team that in the middle of the night was building structures. I'm trying to think of his name, but I'm having a brain fog here. Um, who was, uh, you know, if he thought he was being watched, he would stop everything going on. He, he died without his secrets uh, ever being told. But he was actually building a network and actually picked them up and moved them when he wasn't happy with where they were. He, he took them all back apart like it was nothing and then started to restructure them again. And he died with any information to be left to us unless, again, another hand was possibly maybe in – you know, involved in the government, uh, wanted to know, uh, you know, the secrets, so to speak, like how some of the uh, Tesla story goes. And when he he died, if in fact's true, uh, John Trump, Donald J. Trump, the president's uh, uncle, it said that he played part in the removal of all his uh, notes, ledgers and uh, books that he kept on all, all the work that he did. So, yeah, levitating and moving it's it's fascinating. It really is because, I mean, I would love to have things like that work for me in my life, but I never even gave them a second thought. And here we are in the 20th century. You think our minds would work better. And maybe 200 years ago, they had the science done in some way, you know? Well, and- yeah. Now, what you were talking about was that Coral Castle down in Florida. Right, Coral and Castle. And the man that built it. He was not a large man. He was maybe 140 pounds. Right. Very thin, fragile looking. Yeah, and he just used a tripod and it had some kind of a box on top. And he said he knew the secrets of the Egyptians and how they built their stuff. Well, he was able to move these huge several ton stones by himself. And a little guy like that ain't going to just pick it up. And it's not like you pick it up and put it in your pocket and walk off with it. And to use a tripod, but he had some kind of box on the top. (coughs) There is a picture of that. And after he died, that disappeared. So, you know, might have been like the Tesla. You know, there's technology. And the government likes to keep track of that and see if they can somehow utilize it. Well, you, you, there's nothing wrong with that if it's for the betterment and, and creates purposeful uh, uh, reasons, uh, you know, for man, for for all of us, for our technology. Um, but they don't do it. Um, you know, if they do do it, they take it to suppress it, to keep it and utilize it only um, for Things of purpose that we're not privy to, as I tried to suggest in some of my writing and, you know, going into this uh, format today. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 wild. It's bizarre. It's hard to think about because I've watched some videos even of how people did uh, try to put, you know, some genius in the thought and did make things work, but never on the same level of Coral Castle or, um, you know, the pyramid. Uh, it just it doesn't happen. And not just one, the three in, of alignments to the stars. And again, everything like rock stardom on the money. Um, secrets that we're not privy to. And they hide them. And that's why they invest millions in it. You know, 
again, it doesn't help us at all. All right, anything else you want to bring up on that side? Well, sure. You look you look at the way some of the there's pyramids all over the world, and they're even suspecting them in Antarctica too. Yes, so yes. How long ago would that have been when Antarctica was ice free? We don't know. I don't know how much of a continental drift there is, but when there are maps in existence showing Antarctica without ice, right? You know, map makers would copy a map from a previous map. So how far back does that go? How far back does the seafaring go with people? I mean, there's so much of our history that is just lost. Yeah. And and there's so much of it that's covered up because it doesn't follow the narrative. Right. Well, and, goes, and, until somebody finds another map, the only one I think that makes any, uh, that brings any relevance to it, was it the Pierce Reese map? Was that the name? It might have been, and it was copied. It was that the one that was copied off of a, it was on a gazelle hide, I believe, drawn I, on it. And it showed South America too before. I thought that one came out after, but I, we, I could be wrong here. Again, it's a narrative of research it, we can we can look be. into and talk about. But again, you're right. You're right on the money, no matter what. It shows this place dry, and when people try to, uh, you know, do all the coordinates and everything, it's like somebody saw it through their own eyes, and they must have. Well, yeah, I mean, how else are you going to get a perfect shoreline when it's all covered in ice and a big right. ice shelf coming out from it? It's pretty tough to tell what's under it, but the map did pretty darn good. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. But it, it was it, it almost didn't... like someone had an aerial view of it when it was ice-free. <laughs> yeah, and we shouldn't have been up in the sky at that point. No. We had nothing that could have went up there, but that doesn't mean by what we've learned and with cave show and glyphs and all these different, whether it's a carving in the stone or a painting on the wall, <laughs> it's always depicted. Look at the sky. Look up at the sky. The gods. Um, you can look at. You can look into some of the uh, topics that Eric von Daniken brought up and the chariots of the gods and that book and how he depicts certain things of it. And I think he has a, a lot of relevance there. And, and he was on the money. Some people disagree. Uh, they think he was a little too forward in his wording and, and his analogies of things. But you know what? I think he was a rock star. And I, I think he still is because he took a step. And without a man taking a step forward, you get nowhere. Um, that's probably how they discovered to be able to move stones. And somebody had to do something in order for it to happen. If you want to lose 100 pounds, you got to start by taking that first step in that journey. If you don't take the first step, it's not going to happen. People just have this inside them. And that's why you and I are here talking about all this supernatural unknown and maybe not even supernatural, but real human beings such as the Bigfoot, you know, a flesh and blood creature and more. But again, you're right on uh, some of the things. And you must ask yourself this. The Russian Pope showed up. Antarctic. Uh, John Kerry went to the Antarctic. Um, Obama went to the Antarctic. What were they? And the astronauts went there. What did they go down and th through these ice cavern elevator systems that they put in and installed throughout the ice? What did they go down and see? And we know that there's a lake down there with an abundance of life that we've never identified yet. Yeah. So um, again, I truly believe we're on to something there. And as us as people, we should try to push for it. But, and many people do, but, you know, we can only do so much because it's like hands off. It's for all the, the elites and the powers of the nations only. And that's one of the methods that they do work amongst with, besides the fact that they're all working amongst with us against us now. But when it comes to certain forms of how we get along, um, everybody has a fascination with the unknown, including our governments. Oh, and yeah. We know something's there. We know absolutely something's there. Why? Just because of how they act and who went there. You don't go down to look at a lava rock. Yeah. You know, they're you're not, going, you're they're going, not just looking for meteors on the surface either. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
Even um, though they found quite a few meteorites in Antarctica, which I think is cool. Right. And, and, and back in ancient times, they did, too, because we see some of these uh, meteors were actually carved. And they looked for them, or they followed them, they found the trail, and for some reason, they wanted to do uh, and place art on them to leave them behind us. Because there's a lot of skepticism there, even. Some people say, oh, they, they could have came from Mars with the great explosion or whatever happened on Mars, if in fact all true. And that's always the choice for anybody and the viewers to come to that conclusion on. Look at the research, you base it. But let's just say that occurred. Could in a, a catastrophic explosion, could it have actually blown these artifacts here and were they durable and tough enough not to burn up? No, I, I don't think so. I think coming through the atmosphere, um, you know, we know how difficult uh, it and what we have to go through just to keep planes moving. Uh, although there uh, now are different methods of different uh, uh, carbon fibers and things that actually know how to, and plus there's cooling systems on the outside that let them enter in and out like Freon systems that charge the whole outside of the uh, crafts. So could this thing have possibly made it? No, but they knew to look, they wanted something to do with this meteor and then they created art from it. But a lot of people think, oh no, they got blown off Mars and they got here. I have a hard time accepting that theory, but I, I respect people's thoughts on it. But for me, I'm just saying I have a hard time on it. But getting back to Antarctic, you know, you really have to wonder. I mean, come on. What was all that about? And then not only that, the Russian Pope summons the Vatican for special orders of papers to be brought there of something. Now, that's all over YouTube, Internet, too. Um, pictures as well as the uh, Russian Pope being there. Um and what were the Nazis looking for there in World War II? Oh, New Schwaben. Yeah, good point. Good point. With the they breakaway were looking civilization. For a weapon, obviously, technology of some kind. Well, you know, they were fascinated with the occult. They were fascinated with the unknown. They had mediums around them. They believed in the unknown. They thought they were actually in touch with uh, uh, dimensional beings, extra ETs, perhaps. I don't know. But yeah, that's a good point to bring up. Um, <clears throat> it makes you wonder, did archaeologists and um, the possibility of uh, crash retrievals and so forth put them in a path to where they needed to answer more questions and that's what took them on that way and put them in that path there? Um, I heard at one point, too, that there may have been uh, <clears throat> the Ark of David um, that actually needed to be placed in certain directions on how to handle it. Um, the writings um, that the Vatican provided was to assist them because people, anyone that went near this object was dying and they had to take it and put it somehow in a placement up there. So that even came out, which is kind of bizarre. What was in it? Plutonium. There's only so many things that can actually, um, you know, actually create a radiational problem. I mean, a, yeah, a well, the Ark of the Covenant, they, you know, that machine that was creating mana, right, probably inside it. And if it's some kind of alien technology, because remember, like the priests to get near the Ark of the Covenant, they had to wear this special robes that had different metal and jewels and protections on it. Yeah, it speaks of it, definitely. And I, I think that may have been what that was all about um, as far as the possibility of what those papers were that the, they were waiting on. But again, and, it's... And you look at like when the Babylonians captured the Ark of the Covenant and you, you read the description of what happened to the people, it sounds like radiation poisoning. Yeah, that's everything. Blisters, their fingernails and hair fell out and stuff. It sounds like something radioactive. And they yeah. they put it on a then they put it on an ox or something and send it back. And then the Jews were able to retrieve it. Yeah, and then there's a the legend of uh I can't think of the uh, Pharaoh's son's name where they actually stole the original then and replaced it with a duplication, and then it got lost again, the original of the art. But again, there's uh, more than well, one. Some claim it's in Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, 
and what was it, Sheba or, or Bathsheba or something? Her son was Solomon's son or something. And yeah, that's that's the quite, that's the one. And uh, and he took it, feeling that he was entitled to it. Correct. And yeah. they they claim that it's still there in Ethiopia, and the priests that guard it eventually go blind. Exactly. Yeah, there was monks up there or something. And yeah, what, what's making them have these issues with their health? I, I don't know. But, you know, with that being said, the, what you brought up makes perfect sense of long time, even being too close to something, exposure may not kill you, but could cause these adverse effects if you're by radiated substances in some way because some actually reflected to it as it being weaponry yeah and you know you look at like jericho where they had the ark and they marched around it and did their chants and blew their trumpets and the walls right. fell down right and and that's a that's a that's a very popular story everybody should know that be able to relate to that too so that's a good example and and there again we've got some sound component but what, what is inside that ark? It's uh, supposed to be the Ten Commandments, and who knows what else. I would expect holy artifacts, obviously. But well, what are they? Is some of this alien technology? I think it's certainly possible, because to survive in the desert for 40 years. Right. How do you do it with no food? I mean, there there has had, and, and I don't think we, we got all the gist of the story written through man's hand on everything. But I'm not saying that the elements of the of the story that were put in place um, in ways are, are true. I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying that they are. I, I would believe that they are because that puts us if we if we stay to the true side, it gives us more to associate um, uh, to try to you know. Uh, come to some type of theory on it, you know. Uh, and, and and like when, they, when they left Egypt, I mean, you look at, like in King Tut's tomb, one of the things recovered was a box that kind of reminds me of the Ark of the Covenant. It's slightly different, of course, but it's a box like that. Right. I, I know of the box, but to be honest with you, I only read about it. I never seen anything or any like art type style pictures. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to like keep my mind open to that. And if you ever come across something that but, you can you know, share, yeah, I'd like to check it out. The builders of the Ark of the Covenant left Egypt. So there would obviously be some Egyptian influence upon them having lived there for who knows how long. I don't know how many generations of them had lived in Egypt before they were set free. When Moses right. took them, led them out of Egypt. I mean, how long had they been there? Were they there for a hundred years? Were they there for several centuries? I don't know, but obviously the Egyptian culture had a strong influence on them. Yeah, and it well, the or man's origin and ways depicts certain elements of uh, God's hand <clears throat> or the God's uh, hands working in some ways uh, with that culture. Um, <clears throat> and when you look at certain things said, and I never understood this one thing um, that I guess Moses represented it. Um, where it was said, and I'll probably get this wrong right in a moment because I'm trying to collect my thoughts on how to say it and bring it into my memory because I'm doing both. I'm calibrating both those <laughs> those components right now. But he made a statement like about, like, you know, leave my people, let my people go. Uh, so was there a separation of gods who controlled certain people because weren't we all people of one God? Um, not according to what some of the writings uh, narrate around. Um, and that's why maybe, in fact, truth is in the words of the gods, the gods, meaning more than one. Because when you look at the element of how people were spread out, and some people even say the Antarctic at one point in time was connected here. You know, it was more of a connection on these land bridges. They existed more. And that's how some of the travelers 
in the very, very ancient times, you know, got across from one point to the other because they even claimed that the Indians weren't even the indigenous to the United States, that there were pre-cultures here. Um, right. Before well, that the as oldest, well. The oldest recovered DNA they got in Alaska from some children, and they were of European origin. And over that's eleven thousand years ago, right? And that always seems to come up as well. And the red hair, the light yeah. color eyes, um, and, and they they already know. The minute they know anything, they know enough to already know the origin. When they find, if they find any hair follicles or anything like that, um, but yeah, it, it, that's all well, really. I think a lot of people could have got to different locations in the world during the last ice age or we've had a, a lot more than one ice age i mean this goes like waves in an o in the ocean you know where the climate will change and then you'll have an ice age like what every twelve thousand years something like that was our last one yeah, so well what what's the cycle on having an ice age is it twenty six thousand years or something who knows I mean, none of us were there at the time, so we can't, I don't have enough knowledge on the subject to say for sure, but we know there were many of them. And right. that's why, like, all across the Northern Hemisphere, you've got so many animals that run all the way across. I mean, even, like, squirrels. You've got squirrels in Europe. You've got them here. Okay, how how is that? <coughs> the ones in Europe, they got a lot more hair in their ears, and they look cuter, but... I mean, it's the same basic thing. You got bears, moose, wolves, fox, all across the northern hemisphere. Otters, you know. Mm -hmm. So where where did they? How did they all get across the entire northern hemisphere when you got an ocean on each side? There had to be a way at some point in time. Yeah, there was migration happening without a doubt. With and the world has changed because if you look at all these sunken cities. Um, and there are many, I mean, outside of oh, Cuba yeah. and, and e even the Antarctic, there are places that we know. And even recently in Niagara Falls, something was released with them up there trying to try to uh, protect the ecosystem and whatnot. They narrated the uh, falls around and they were draining it and they came across statues and figurines standing at the bottom, at the basin of it. Um, and some pictures are out there about it. Now, are they 100% true? What was posted, I don't know. But these are some things that are coming to light right now. And this is something in real time that has been going on and that they have their hands in. So you see these things. And then even, even more so than that, you know, the cities and whatnot. Look at the Baltic Sea when you think about that anomaly down at the bottom there that was fine. Yeah. Um, and they're saying it's like a petrified spacecraft and to look at it it looks just like that how yeah. does that get there in this water in the middle of nowhere well it was land at one time probably during an ice age when the sea level was a lot lower than what it is now you look in cuba you got a a city with pyramids a half mile deep right no i i agree that there's a lot of this out there but the that one, no. that one anomaly blows my mind because I don't see any movement on this earth that could have put it where that particular um, anomaly has been found when they were uh, using the sonar scan and came across it. And when they went down and took pictures of it, it's mind blowing. It's not a structure. And but they it also were having equipment issues when they were near it. Um. I remember that there was something said. Uh, well, there were, there's, isn't there always an issue? Look at Oak Island. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just seems that the issues continue and continue when you get close to anything. And is that suppression of the universe that we're not meant to know everything or it's not yet time for us to know everything? I don't know, but it's to me, it's, it's, you know, phenomenal that we're finding all this and that we do know it. And it's sad very sad that the guys that work so hard are truly suppressed. And if they don't, just like our healthcare right now, doctors speaking on, well, the scientists uh, in the same manner, climate control versus the ice core drillings. They know every 120 years we go through what we're going through. And I guarantee you, if we could get them to stop doing what they're doing in the sky um, for a month, you would see a whole different reality of what they is going on. 
but they're, they're not going to do it. Even Trump wanted that to be done with. Again, I shouldn't be really bringing up too much of heavy, uh, you know, politics here because this is, you know, I'm trying to base this whole whole thing that we're doing on, you know, whatever we can leak out in ways of um, what we know and what the factors of time has shown us, what the proofs of time have shown us and who it narrates to. But I will say this, it narrates around the ones of power all the time. Oh, they man. are always the ones allowed to get the information where us, the people, the general people, the workers that built the country, did everything to this planet. Um, not so much for us. No, you know? we need to know and we don't need to know. Right. Now, exactly. Have, have you ever heard about, uh, not too far from me, actually, I think it was either Macon or Moberly, Missouri, in a coal mine, 300 feet down, they found a city. Yeah. And they did find a skeleton uh, of a person that was 10 feet tall and found some tools and supposedly a working fountain in the city square. Now, how would this survive and how old must it have been to have coal? Right. And w would that be they somehow survived like an eruption from Yellowstone or something because they say that goes off like every 600,000 years. And, you know, if it, and, and it's nearing that time. Now, if that thing were to blow, that'd wipe out half the country. Have, have you ever looked at the projection of if, if that were to blow up like Mount St. Helens did, the ash and everything, how much of the country that would cover? Oh, that would be a, a mega issue. Just like uh, uh, Notre Dame, when he ex uh, expressed in uh, his prophe prophecy of uh, the United States and certain things to happen, which in, in, in some key components right now blend up. One, one of the worst case uh, would be the fault line. And if that became part of... Uh, Again, same type of uh, depiction of a problem, all of the same type of magnitude. Yeah, it'd be devastating for uh, humanity. Well, yeah, I mean, it would create a nuclear winter probably across the world. As big as that is, because, you know, it'd choke out the sky for quite Without a time. Without a doubt. Because, you know, they were saying that the blast radius from that, I think, was, what, over 600 miles? I think so where it'd, you know, throw out ash and stuff like when Mount St. Helens blew up. I mean, that wiped out a pretty good-sized area. It and did indeed. It Yellowstone did indeed. is one of those super volcanoes. Now, is that why they found a city? And, and how would they have protected that city? They must have had some kind of technology to create some kind of bubble. There's, even if they were buried, but... Did they ever dig themselves out? Apparently not, because they did find a skeleton and some tools. If right. the story is true. Right. You know, it was in a, a newspaper article from the 1800s. Now, is it true or is it just made up? I mean, I didn't see any pictures. I never heard of it again. Well, but ground, pen ground penetrating radar is proving more and more these factors of these cities, as well as some of these buried cities under mountains and so forth. I mean, there was a fascination, but maybe not a fascination, but maybe a very good reason why they felt they needed to make all these connections throughout the United States. And I'm talking an old time where there were channels of tunnels that crossed everywhere and i'm talking in mega mile structures components um that would go all over the place even under the pyramid it claims that there are like three tunnels that can resource across and you don't think they're there but then you hear about submarines who can go under certain parts of waters and can travel up 100 miles 200 300 400 miles into the coastal under on an underground river caverns and they've been doing it. And they know that there's existences of places. Well, I mean, like all along the Mississippi River, all the states that border it, is where you find all the caves. 
Now, in the United States, the state with the most caves is Tennessee, and number two is Missouri, and I think Illinois ranks pretty high up there because there, there's quite a bit of Illinois along the Mississippi River. And all those states along there are just loaded with caves and all through the Appalachian Mountains, too. Right. And you know what? I really think there's much out there that they're not going to dis discuss with us ever. I mean, you know, we have these burial mines, giants. We have the Smithsonian, giants. We have newspaper articles that support all the facts of the, the reality of giants. We have old pictures and newspapers showing uh, many things that... Oops, Sorry, Mr. Government, but you know what? They got at, and they are at, and people, only the willing ones that really want to look to do their research can find us. And there's two brothers, I think they're, uh, um, uh, they're, they're stonemasons. They've been following this trail in many ways on the giants, and they have went into caves and they found teeth and, and things, and, and molars, which we know they didn't come from normality people like you and I, just the normal homo sapien sapien. <coughs> are they Nephilim? I don't know. Are they Anunnaki? I don't know. But they are giants, and they did exist here on this earth, and there are still people out there that genetically, if they are of a certain bloodline, RH or negative, seem to have growth patterns like this nine out of ten times. Yeah, the, the one percentile range is the one that has a genetic deficiency somehow of a hormone thing where it makes their body grow. Those people actually have uh, deficiencies in their structural body, structural, you know, their their core, their right. bones. And, and they know that. So, yeah, I mean, we know the giants once were here. Some talk 14 feet tall. And you could see them in pictures holding up a lion in a, like it's a little kitten, you know? And you know these lions, I mean, you want right. to one to tear our head off. They're holding them up as pets. Yeah, that was the Anunnaki, and they were, you know, it looked like they were 12 feet tall. Well, or more. Well, I wrote a piece a while back where, you know, the Anunnaki creation story for man, there were six Adams and six Eves. Yes. Now... Why would you have six? I felt that maybe that might be a way to explain the different races. Because you've got your four basic races of man, where you've got your Europeans, your Africans, your Middle Eastern, and your Far Eastern. And then you've got some mixtures and blends of those. And then what about two races of Bigfoot? Add that in there, that'd give you your six Adams and Eves because when you look at the Bigfoots, the ones like from Asia are reported to have the reddish hair. Right. Their reports, you know, and that's but why. They have, they have nothing to do with the giant epithecus. Gigantopithecus. Gigantic, yeah, they have nothing to do with that trait of DNA, though, we, correct? We don't know. We There's just so much we don't know. And you look at the mocked up skull. That's just someone's concept and interpretation when all you got is a hunk of jawbone, but it doesn't have, you know, they make that skull out with the big sagittal crest. And I don't believe Bigfoot have that. I think they got a different shaped head and it's probably full of brain. And because they got teeth like ours, they don't have big giant fangs like a gorilla. Do you think they have double set of teeth like some of the giants, six fingers, six toes, double rows of teeth? Because that's another uh, representation to Anunnaki, double rows of teeth. Now, I haven't seen that personally, but I've heard it before, but I can't confirm it because I didn't see it with my own eyes. Right. And and, and, and a lot of what, what I'm talking about here, I, I've never actually seen it with my own eyes, but it's it's talked about. And Al, Al Missouri and some guys out there, other guys out there, big no, bigger names, uh, they're invited to lectures and so forth. These guys do uh, and have traveled to Peru and some of these other places when it comes to the elongating skulls and uh, the bones and all these different things. And they actually got to see a lot of that stuff. I wish I could have, but I, I can't. I can only talk about it. But I know the existence of it is out there. Uh, according to them, and we have to understand that these are people representing truths to us. And 
I have to back them up and say they're telling us the truth because they just wouldn't come out with something like this. And it, it just wasn't that they found them there. It was found even in the Americas here. Where, I, But again. They uh, found and, them in Europe and Asia as well. Right. The elongated right. skulls are all over the world, even in Africa. And you look at like certain African tribes where they do that binding of the baby's head. Yes. Try and create the appearance of an elongated skull. Yeah, they wanted to make themselves look like part of the God Center. But here's the thing. They can do that with the skull from a baby because of the soft bone matter that exists within them. But they don't know. They never have the mass to where it will ever no. become. And, and the thing is, with those elongated skulls, their sutures are the, where the bones knit together are different. Yes. yes. So I think that you know, they are either probably some kind of a hybrid or a species of man that no longer exists. And maybe once in a while in the genetics, one pops up. I don't know. Right. And that could actually reflect to your hypothesis of how you're seeing the, uh, the six different uh, traits of human or DNA for, um uh, that well, you were like Bigfoot, when they do the DNA, they always come back on the mitochondrial side as human female. Well, what if it isn't human female? What if it's Anunnaki female? Right. Is what's coming back as human. Because right. what separates us from the apes is we've had two chromosomes merged. So an ape will have 24 chromosomes and we'll have 23. And that's right. why there are experiments to try and make a super soldier by combining human and ape didn't work. Spending because millions of dollars on it. And you know what? Germany was one of, the, one of the, you bring up a very critical point. The Germans 50, 60 years ago were doing experiments with women and apes. That was the Russians. Oh, that was, I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. Well, I know the Germans had something to do with some type of sequencing as well, but I'm not going to debate that with you right now. And I'll accept myself as being wrong. But I think you understand that I do have the information, just a little confusion on the representation. And I apologize, everybody, for that. I do have something. And you know, if one of our rivals was doing it, we were probably doing it, too. But it's Oh, hell yeah. Hard. Oh, hell yeah. That's all this deep state stuff, you know? All right. So look, hey, before we get too far gone in this, because you and I could go forever, because, you know, we share a lot in common, knowledge. And here's the other, here's the other key factor. That I wanted to go back to, and I, 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 but before I forget, this whole thing on the Alabama white thing is it an albino, albino Bigfoot? Do you know anything about that? I know of the, the, it, to me, it's, it could be just folklore, um, but it said that it was out there, cat like head, uh, movement like cat while on all fours, it, narrating around the Bigfoot. Is there a possibility that we have the, uh, you know, uh, an albino out there uh, population hidden down in Alabama and also somewhat said to be in North Carolina. Well, I've actually spoke with a woman who saw a white Bigfoot. She caught, she's in California and she saw it looking in the window and she figured it was old. It was about eight feet tall. And she said when she caught it looking in, it smiled at her and she said, its teeth were all broken and jagged and stuff, so she figured it must have been old. But she does have Bigfoot on her property and in several different colors, ranging from one that's somewhat blondish to brown, black, and this one that's apparently white that she felt was an old female because it was eight feet tall. Now, it was it white because it was old, or was it white because it was... You know, you, you think maybe there's a little more inbreeding going on with them and then genetic anomalies will pop up. And like, for example, near, right near my house, at one time there was one deer that was black that was running with the herd. I mean, the first time I seen him, I had to slow down, do a double take because, you know, the brown part of him had a lot of black hair mixed in with it, and he was significantly darker than all the other deer. But the white was the same. Now, I've seen pictures where a deer is entirely black. 
it's rare, but you know, something goes a little wrong somewhere, and when the yeah. genes match up, and you get that, just like where you get like a black cougar. They yeah. say it's like what one in a million or something, but still, it can happen. Oh, I believe that. I mean, and, and I think you know you could get a Bigfoot, for example, that would be white. That that maybe is an albino or, you know, might be a descendant of one. Because, you know, not every albino is, there's varying degrees of albinism. Right. Because like, right. like sometimes you see pictures of deer where they have all these different white patches on them. And then they'll have blue eyes instead of brown eyes. But they don't have pink eyes like a true albino. Interesting. All right. Hey, we've been spending a lot of time on these things. Let's jump off for some of the UFO crowd that may, may be able to watch this and check into it. Um, I want to bring up something. This may not have nothing to do with UFO, but it, it may be alien of nature. Um, so many people talk about the black eyed children. But something's coming to light in a different way about the black eyed children. Some of the first experiencers, the ones that had the encounters, um, are now, 30 years later, being revisited. And they say that these visitors, black-eyed children, they may have seen them in a bank parking lot or something, had an encounter, they were uncomfortable, they managed to get away, whatever the scenario is, no missing 411 there. But now, mysteriously, um, some people are claiming, and I'm not saying it's true, and you have the right to choose on you know, what you want to believe out there, look into these things like we do, like I do. Um, they're saying 30 years later now, there's knocks on the door, they open a door, and they have not changed. And it, they, it's like this memory um, of the first experience has made such an impression in their minds that they even knew their facial features in every way about what they were in front of when this first occurrence happened and they're coming across them again. In one case where they knocked on a door of a person 30 years later and the door opened, of course, and I didn't get into the whole story because it was, <laughs> uh, you know, you try to read through something. They want you to download 10 other things. Yeah. So I looked for it a different way and I did find other parts of the, of, the same story, um, but not as detailed as the one that I was reading. And I didn't give up on it, but I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on black eyed children being revisiting now, visiting back the people that they try to possibly abduct because they always seem to need a ride or something. They're, they have a need for them. Or they um, want to go inside your house. And, and, you know, you look at, the descriptions, how they describe their clothes even look like they were homemade. Bingo. Yeah. And, and they still look the same 30 years later. That's you know, are they, they somehow traveling through time? Are they from another dimension? Are they some kind of a, who knows what, something that's been put in suspended animation. That's like an agent of aliens. Who knows? Yeah. But you know, the entire eye being black, that that doesn't sound like a normal person to me. No, and, and the only thing it matches up to me is, is it part of the E.T. Uh, robotic family of greys where they say the talls control the little ones and they're actually, you know, technology. They're not, they're, they're like part something hybrid with technology in them. And the, the eye, it's just an eye covering. Uh, like like if it's protection yeah. so you have that narrative but i'm going to get into something else uh here just to keep on ufos um the phoenix lights and I, the reason i want to bring this back up are you aware of it at all i'm sure you're everybody kind of probably heard of this yeah where there were like what was it like seven of them they were, um, there were yeah there was a lot of them up there uh anyway in the air force manual norad in the white house and the White House are the only ones that do not fall under Freedom of Information Act. And get this, and get this. If they don't fall under that, that means they're protected 
and they wanted the Air Force to always narrate all the information through them, and then they would drip it into the Pentagon. Makes me wonder how much ATIP may of information they really may have had just because of what we're going on in the present day and what's being disclosed, like the Tic Tac video and the fact that I had something up by uh, Obama that reflected uh, where he actually based his uh, information very carefully, but he also placed the information. So he puts it in your mind, and I have that. I could play it, but for right now, let's just go this way. Um, so anyway, we know that this happens. And then the governor, I think his name was uh, Simpsons, Simpsons or something like that. Um, he even made a statement that he witnessed all this. And then he came out and said that he wanted to get to the bottom of this, that we should know more about what we all saw. You have, you know, 700 people, thousands of people that witnessed it, 700 people that testify about it. Um, so you got all this. They're all saying it's a mothership. Um, There's a lot of different video footage of it. Right, exactly. A lot of people had the, had the phones and that worked. Now, here's the, here's the real weird part. And this is where it, you have to wonder how far the deep state is in with influence. Well, this governor, a lot of people didn't know this. He had 22 criminal charges of bank fraud against him. And while this hearing was going on, he was allowed to leave it, uh, the, the, the hearing, to take a private phone call, which he did take. And some saying he took an agreement because shortly after the hearing, all the charges were dropped against him. All 22 counts of bank fraud were, were just non-existence anymore. And then he came out to do a press conference with one of his constituents dressed up in an alien suit and said it was all just a facade. Oh, his, his story oh. completely changed. He must and have then, something and had something and used it for a bargaining chip. Either that or they came to him and said, keep your mouth shut. We can make your things go away. Your issues go away. Yeah. And, bury, and they, bury, and they did. will bury your charges. And they did. His charges all went away. He never came back and supported the people. As a matter of fact, um, he narrated a theory around the people of conspiracy theorists where he was one of them in that moment, which he totally changed his, uh, but it was an, again, he, he suddenly had an emergency press conference to explain that this was all nothing more than a fake. And then he had the ET there of a tall gray or some type of thing. And then they try and blame it on an air force jet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chinese lanterns, air force jet. Meanwhile, it, it, it hovered there. And people actually, some people um, that went under interviews even said that they could even see the certain details through the sky with the lights yeah. of flashing lights. And uh, people were flashing like, uh, the you know, the, the night deer lights, the spotlights. Yeah. And so they were picking up edges, which says if they're picking up edges. It's, it's more than a flare. Yeah. It, it's man-made. But again, um, so this governor who was supporting it, saw it, witnessed it himself, came on, said it, goes into the hearing. Looks like there was a plea deal made, but not with the judge and not between the allegations of the issues. Everything goes away. And that was one of our best encounters, just like Randlesham. And Randlesham's one of the, the, the most hardcore significant things out there it's it's the roswell 47 plus and i even in, within roswell there's more than roswell if you go into 45 through 47 where it was like multiple crafts on um that looked like they could have been hit by or zapped by some type of radar frequency that distorted their ability to uh keep the uh aerodynamics in function and they came down crashed and whatnot but even there where they talk about uh and Holtz himself, uh, through the Freedom of Information, you could see what he wrote. It sounds sci-fi-ish, but the reality is there. They had motion picture cameras because that happened over three nights. And on the 28th, between the 28th and the 29th of December was the most critical night.
because that was when the big ship came and they were saying it was around 50 feet. Now, here's that's how some of the uh, information gets hidden and suppressed because there were three nights. But this was the most important. It landed even nearby farms where citizens saw it. So there wasn't just 30 to 40 Air Force military people there. Um, there was more than that there. And they saw it. And not only did they see it, they had a standoff with the ETs. About four and a half foot tall. And this is all testimony given. It's all testimony given by a soldier named Larry Warren, who worked uh, for the United States Air Force. And he testifies and now comes out as a leaker, whistleblower, that says he wants it to be known that there were actually motion picture cameras working. There were uh, still cameras working. There were video, videography, video cameras. So they had every element of technology working, and it was all photographed. It was all uh, put down on motion film, uh, motion picture film that they were using, which was the most high, I guess at the time, uh, best technology yeah. to use. Um, they de described it of flashing lights, that it was translucent, that it was, in fact, uh, aerodynamic in shape. Uh, I don't want to say pyramid, but maybe bamboo uh, or well, not bamboo. Um, I'm sorry. Um, um, I can't think of the name of it, but if it comes to me, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you it. But anyway, it did project lights. And also it was uh, hovering over the installation where all the nukes were sending down beams. So something's absorbing. Were you Have thinking you of a boomerang shaped craft? Well, they used a different, I think, terminology, but I will say that's probably the closest that I would come to it and say, yes, I'll agree with you to that. Because um, that's the way I took the information and the articles that I read. I also heard that there's something or a couple things on YouTube where Mr. Warren came out. And I meant to research him for tonight, but I had to do some Christmas shop and things today. But I knew enough about the whole story. Who doesn't follow something as big as this? Because what I'm picking out here and trying to, to, to put in place are proofs of eyewitnesses, experiencers, people who saw this. And here, this is like what they call the third kind, where the extraterrestrials actually came out of the craft. And they witnessed it, and not only witnessed it, filmed it all. Now, if you go to the prime minister over in, in Britain, and whatnot, you know, no one's going to really, it's all suppressed information. Uh, the government, deep state, uh, military industrial complex, uh, the elites, they're not going to let it come out as being a truth, even though we have military people um, now acting as agents for us, we the people, uh, sharing this story because they were there in real time, watched it. Now, wasn't that, gentleman you referred to wasn't he um an mp on the military base in Rendlesham? Um, you know what i i wasn't he on guard there, duty there there were several that were on guard duty now it was larry warren himself one no but here's what i can't confirm to you for the record of proof all the low level military soldiers were called on and as they walked away, a statement that Mr. Warren even made as he turned back to watch to see what was going on, because the higher up ranks stayed there. He turned and looked from what they called the place called Capel Green. And I think it's spelled C-A-P-L-E, Capel Green. And he turned and he looked back and his supervisors and I thinking he also meant and included Colonel Halt were standing there still in a face-off. And that's all it ever was. They were looking at us, meaning the military, our military representatives there, filming this, observing this. And on the other hand, they were looking vice versa. Yeah. So it was just, it was an eye-to-eye -eye contact that lasted like seven minutes. And they, they, they described it, they, even the uniforms. This gentleman said that they had like packs on around their waist and you could tell that there was some type, some type of equipment or something. Um, so here, these are some of the most significant things that we can talk to, to, to share with people in ufology. 
and hope it helps them. And I wanted to do that. But the glowing lights, one led right on red light on top, flashes of light. Uh, the craft definitely had definition and shape to it. And that was very uh, definitive. They could tell it 100 percent. No question. Um, again, the citizens saw it. The guy's name who made this testimony and provided the story over to uh, an overseas uh, affiliate. His name was Larry Warren, and he was one of the ones. Now, there were other people um, on other nights that observed the craft, and I think that might be what you're talking about, where there was a recording and there were certain uh, identification uh, things that looked like uh, Egyptian writing on it. So that story's out there too. But this wasn't, remember now, this this occurred three nights in a row. Yeah, well, the one that I was talking about with you earlier was a smaller, it'd be like a single occupant wedge-shaped craft. Nothing came out of it, but it had like hieroglyphs and the guy touched it. Right. And then later he wrote down all this binary code and it was some kind of a message. Exactly. <coughs> And I don't know if that had to do with DNA or something. I could be wrong on that. Um, I, I heard some things over the years. I'd have to look into it. We could, I could brush up on it. We could always bring it back up so we have more more thorough to that part. But, yeah, so y exactly. And they even had something like that in the series The X-Files. Remember where they uh, had uh, that craft yeah. washed up on the beach that had all these hieroglyphs on it? So they were kind of running off of that story in there. Mm. I didn't catch that episode. It's something I could probably look for to get an example from. Um, it was however, like supposed to be on the ocean beach in Africa or something, and it was on a X Files episode. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't catch that one, but it's good information. It is it was. I know that um, X Files in ways, in my opinion, seems to have been fed certain informations. I also think that other people that were in the movie industry were provided information uh, that uh, correlated. Well, they did the research to try and come up with some interesting content. And, and that's it's like, that's I'll take this element from this story and then we'll create an episode around it. I well, mean, then that's how writers are. Right. Well, then uh, think about this one. <laughs> How did the Jet Jetsons cartoon get it so right? Yeah. I don't know. How did Walt Disney get it so right? I, well, I don't know. They say Walt was actually a, a Mason, so maybe he was privy to the other types of information as well. I mean, who knows? And, and again, it comes as if there's levels of power. Masonically, they say the number three is very special, but they also say that there's several levels above that. I don't know if it's all true, but some people do state that. On the lowest levels, it's all about raising money, fundraisers, and whatnot. And then as it goes up in levels, um, it's more creative. It's more dark. And I'm not going to give a lot of speculation on that, but just to say how some things work. And our governments are no better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, they're to me, they're purposeful for information and if you take a look at where we are in our world in 2021 and the disaster that it has been, it almost pushes me in my mind at a point where like, are these people working for someone else? Because if you reflect to some of the things that we have as information provided, like the Georgia Guidestones and more, if they were to stop humanity and depopulate and all these other things, what would purpose? What would the purpose of money be? You know, it's almost like they know something, or they're working with something, or they're being instructed from somebody. There's no purposeful connection to harm and destroy, unless it possibly would benefit somebody else. And I don't see how it's going to benefit some of these. Uh, foundations with four letter influences and yeah. pharma, pharma gates. If you depopulate the planet down to 1 billion people, it'd be a lot easier to conquer than 7 billion people. Oh, I, I agree that, but the, the numbers are much lower than that. 
I mean, if you go by information provided. And well, that's what the Jordan Guidestones if, wanted to do is reduce the world population to one billion. <laughs> that's what the stone said? Yeah. I thought it was 500 million. Well, I think 500 million of them would probably be Chinese because they got so well, they should take those. Population. They should take them all. <laughs> no, I, I mean, keep keep the good people. I mean, you know, I don't want to be negative. I, it's just, you know, we're at a time where, you know, a lot of things have happened, and I don't want to be disheartening to any culture because there's a lot of good people, uh, Chinese, who want no parts of this whole system of, uh, uh, you know. Well, your average Chinese is a decent, hardworking people. And I love their food. Oh, yes. I do. I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> don't let nothing happen to these people. You know, my favorite and, restaurant to go to. Yeah, I like to hit the Chinese buffet. It's <laughs> great. Right, and and I guarantee you, Tuesday Joe's going to probably try to harm that now. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. the place we're in, and I'm sure this announcement's going to come. And it's he's they're working up some type of ele of an element of a Christmas gift. I'm telling you. Uh, uh, when Carmela said she had concerns for how Christmas was going to be, I don't know if she was actually, not that I, I, I debate that in my own mind, was she sending us a message because I utilized it. I said it months ago and spoke about it because no one seemed to catch it, the fabric of it. And I initially thought, well, maybe it has to do with the shortages and all this thing. And depending upon who's married to who and who's Chinese and who has a connection to transportation, because that exists in Congress, believe me. Yeah. Some are very despised. Um, and that's okay. That, that, that's really, it's okay. But, you know, it's all about a bigger purpose of a bigger thing. And even if we take numbers out of the equation. Um, all right. There's hidden agendas that we're just never going to be privy to. And it, all we can do is sound like conspiracy theorists and speculate on it. But, you know, a lot of our speculation fits the scenario. Oh, my God, has it ever in many ways. And that's why some of this stuff here is going to really come out and enlighten some people, to be perfectly honest with you. Do you know about the, uh, by any chance, do you know about the uh, story about uh, the Titanic? When they tried to change this whole thing years ago. Because no. they did. All right. Let me do something here if I can find it. I'm going to try to find something here. Give me one minute. Because we're working together on this group room, and it's important for me for uh, to share everything that I can that helps us all too. Let me see here. I know I placed it somewhere. It's mind blowing, but research research says it's true. Um, when you go through who was on it who they worked for, who built the ship, all those kind of things. So there's a, there a it is. theory out there that it was sunk deliberately. Oh, most, well, there wasn't just sunk deliberately. There was two Titanics. To get rid of. All right, here we go. Uh, the opposition to the creation of a central bank in the United States. And the men on the Titanic were opposed to a central bank, they had to die. Among those were John Jacob Astor, Isidore Strauss, Benjamin Guggenheim, and a host of other millionaires who were opposed to a central bank in America. Therefore, they had to be taken out of the way. And they were on the Titanic. The company building the ship was owned by J.P. Morgan, who was himself an agent of the Rothschilds family the Rothschilds being the bankers for the Pope and the Vatican. The main Jesuit targets were brought on board. The captain of the ship was Edward <coughs> John Smith. It appears from his actions that Captain Smith was a Jesuit coadjutor, that is, a Jesuit who has taken the oath but does not wear the robes. A coadjutor blends into the scenery and never looks like a Jesuit priest. It is a veteran sea captain, Edward Smith, who orders the ship to travel through an 80 square mile ice field at full speed on a moonless night. There had been over eight telegrams warning the captain of the danger. He's warned eight times, slow the ship down 
slow the Titanic down. You're going too fast. Not once stop. Knew there was an ice, you know, iceberg field up ahead. Knew that he should have slowed down, but didn't. And so you look and you say, how was it that this man could go headlong into a field of icebergs and not slow the ship down, not be more careful. The only way you can, the only conclusion you can draw is as a coadjutor of the Jesuit order, right through the line, the chain of command, he was told, sink the ship. They built a ship of death called the Titanic. The Pretty crazy, huh? Was yeah. Same. Well, I got more and good details of it. The Rothschild uh, thing is about three minutes long. It's a little different. And it narrates from the early, uh, not late, late 1800s. Uh, factual information that we're, so to speak, living within right now. Yeah, so, I mean, you have to put things together when we talk about things like Bigfoot. Sometimes when he spotted these black op ops helicopters, whoever they are, deep state, and we know that they're, you know, everybody thinks that there's just, oh, there's the general intelligence and this and that. No, there are many levels above with names that will never be divulged. And they're supported immensely through tax dollars and money to keep them operate operational and to guard and close guard and take care of certain issues of what the narrative controls through a, a one world government. Because to be quite honest with you, in my mind, and not to go too far off on over under this, um, it's just mind boggling what they'll do, you know, period. I, I'll just leave it like that. It's just mind boggling what they'll do. And if you did listen to some of these other, um, uh, uh pieces of data and information, um, it tells the whole story. And even in 1970, they came out with a project lockstep, which then took the father's writings into a think tank where this think tank then passed it on and started to first to find the information, how to start the narrative and critical race theory how to start it in school educations, et cetera, et cetera, the blanket of everything we live with right now. And that data can be found out there. Even And there's even more. If you go under the NASA website, NASA didn't even realize that they had released articles openly to the public that narrated this whole collusion. And these papers are out there, and they're found by people like you and I, or others that are conspiracy theorists and they're rock stars because they're the ones that are now putting all this information in place. And like you just made the statement, if it wasn't for people like us with some theory and not afraid to try to, you know, create a, an, an opinion of fact, um, this wouldn't be out there. No, you could take 50% of this, if not if, even into the 70 percentile range that most of their information that the, the, the modern day public would have right now would be nothing because they no. didn't know where to look for it. Well, that's just it. You know, you can find anything on the internet if you type in the correct search parameters. Exactly. One of the things that I find fascinating is I follow litigations, lawsuits, and more because when you follow that trail is the first part of part A, um, and I'll just describe part A real briefly here because we're getting into a element of time. But um, when you follow this, you'll see where the real work's being done, who the footworkers are, who the grassroots people truly are and what they're doing and where the changes are that they're trying to fight. So you can find recorded data that it is an actual case. It has case numbers. It has docket numbers. And then you can put it together uh, when you can look at the complaint and so forth and why it's going into the courts and so forth. And that's that's the key place, the key element. Um, if you go by certain letters of the alphabet or certain numeral numbers, numerology of numbers, um, that just may be a blanket of something else. Because everybody has a theory even right now that Christmas is going to be mind blowing of a different matter in a different way from a bigger source of something they want to see happen. And by this, 
10 six, and I am using a, a, a figuration of a number that stands for a letter of six, 10 six, which everyone knows what that insurrection date was about. Um, it's all over the place. It's just all over the place. And all these things correlate. They all match up and all the information's out there. And uh, it's a big attack and it's shameful. It's shameful. And this is why I'm saying there's something tied into this deep state archaeology, our DNA that goes. It's linking to something. It's linking the bloodlines. A lot of people say that already, um, you know, and the possibility of who are, who are we in touch with? Is, is there other direction here in play? Again, it's a hypothesis. But is it possible that there is other elements in place? Because to me, to destroy a world, even if it was to come down to one billion as the number you use, and let's say that's a, a factual number and it's easier to, to handle that number. Um, if they handle that number and the, and, and the population of hum humanity goes away, which I don't see any reason why that which would be true, they're trying to take 250,000 people uh, in real time now to Mars to colonate. And I already think that that's pretty much... Uh, there's a step in the bucket there already because we know anti-gravity came out for over 40 years ago. That was already yeah. uh, figured out. Um, we could take other narratives that would take us into long-term, you know, uh, conversations that way that, um, that they want just a, a, a place of property of slavery. And what would it mean to them? What would it mean to them there? To me, it's almost like somebody wants this place back. Like, or something more. Why would why would it be so important to the Bilderbergers or the four corporate leaders of banking, Vanguard, BlackRock, and all these other names out there? Morgan and Chase and uh, the superstars of money. Um, it's all about control. It's really not about a dollar, if you really think about it. It's it, it, it's, it's power a, and influence. Yeah, but without people, it means nothing. Yeah, but. If you reduce the people, you less of them are easier to control. I would agree to that, but I don't see a meaning of all this planet for nothing. Yeah, I and mean, if you think about four or five people having to hand, you know, the full Haas in the deck of the cards. Yeah. Or let's just say you got the four aces, the four horsemen, the ones who think they are. Um, what does it mean? Yeah. I mean, really, what what the what the flipping hell does it mean? There's something bigger here, man. I, I and I really truly believe that um you know, you brought up things uh, about the Germans and Antarctica and things found and possibilities this that and um well, you know, just like in the Grand Canyon where they supposedly found an underground city, the Sm Egyptians, the Smithsonian came in yeah, took a whole bunch of stuff, and now in the Grand Canyon, you're not allowed to fly in that area. It's restricted it, airspace. It's Why? all restricted, exactly. You're not allowed to go look. You don't. You know, no need because no you might find time. that there's some truth to it when they went to suppress it. Yeah. So you put a no-fly zone. That's about the only way you're going to be able to see it, because apparently, if you go down the river, you don't see it. Right. The entrance that is. Right. Right, and we well, know I'll, that there, we know that everybody's looking for the lost Dutchman mind, and there's been TV shows about it that were stopped and suppressed, and these guys knew where they could go, where they couldn't go. They and didn't. a lot of people come up missing. Oh, now, yeah. Now they also, like in Africa, found ancient mines, and they don't have, you know, where they're supposedly find stockpiles of gold. Where'd all that go? Well, you know, some some of the things I could bring forth to you was if you go back, you know, a long time ago, um, the British sent troops and ships in to navigate through as much gold as they could to do a uh, takeover, like an occupied takeover, like when we called occupied Japan and people were collecting figurines and pottery and different things. And they become they became very valuable. Anytime the occupied red seal is on the bottom, it's, it's a power enforcement of another country running a country. And uh, because they made deals, just like they did when it, when people talk about how slavery worked. I mean, 
people people's own cultures sold out their own cultures you know <laughs> well a, and, and there's still slavery going on in africa no and it's even going on in america in many I ways mean, oh over there in africa they actually sell slaves well <laughs> i i uh, know that you know, I, I, let, let's see these blm people make a big fuss you know they want to have a reason <laughs> to complain <laughs> but they're silent about the slavery that goes on in Africa. I mean, if they're such activists, I would think that that would be more of an issue than any uh, something that happened that came to an end in 1865. It's, you know, I don't feel that reparation should be paid because no. if they were to be paid to anybody, it should have been someone who had the actual experience. Right. And the bottom line is this. I've never owned any slaves and they never picked any cotton and therein, therein ends the argument. I understood. I understand that totally. And and that's why, you know, when you look at border issues too, uh, Biden only has concerns with Ukraine because he's in bed with them. He's in partnership with them, but he has no issue of letting all the people cross the border. Again, uh, totally going off into other topics, but they're deep and they're real and they do exist. And again, it goes into uh, control of the power and what the narrative is and what the purpose behind the narrative is, because there's steps taking this whole juncture of everything with it. It's a method to collect, condition, gather, uh, destroy, suppress, uh, knock and off. take away our rights little by little. Oh, every day. Our rights are already diminishing. And they're, well, they're I mean, it's just, I, I see the left using the Nazi playbook. They're so similar in so many ways. I mean, it's, you know, you take the rights away a little bit at a time and the people will put up with it and yeah. look at the lockdowns and everything. And I, I think the people have had enough. We want to get out there. We want to go into the parks. We want to go on vacation. We want to go out to dinner. We don't want, you know, we want to go to the mom and pop shops and support everybody. And but what they've done with all this lockdown is they've pretty well choked out, you know, the little guy, and it's all going for corporate. Where the big chains they yes. they're going and they'll survive. But you know, the little mom and pop shops, they've they've done seems like they've done their best to destroy, you know, the entrepreneurs. Right. And if they can do more. They're going to create ghettos throughout all the cities. There's not going to be any substance of structure for shopping or purpose. And then it's going to all be stay home and you order by Internet and we'll watch you do it. And that's why I pushed the other night. Listen, man, if you want to make your dollar count and let your pet let the Petro grow a little bit, go to the bank when you go out the next few days and take cash out and use all cash. Make cash yeah. have a purpose again. So their digital cards stop them from <laughs> following you. And now I, I come up with all kind of <laughs> methods of how to fight back. Do people listen to them? I don't know. But that's one way you can fight back. Go to the bank, get your money out that you think you're going to spend. Yeah, I, I know we're not living in safe times. But if you're shopping with somebody, two, three people together, um, just everyone stay close. Utilize And, and learn to grow some of your own food, too. Oh, and without a doubt. Well, you know, if, if you got a place to store it, there's no reason you shouldn't be canning. Right. If, and, if you and you know, know what? Do it. Now, <laughs> I, I've given up on having a garden here because it gets raided so bad it ain't even funny. I had one year, I had 24 tomato plants, and I only got six tomatoes the whole season because somebody big and hairy likes them too. And every time they'd just start to turn color, they'd get picked. And it wasn't by me. And I mean, <coughs> a half a dozen plants were in cherry tomatoes. And you, you mean to tell me I'm only going to get six tomatoes out of two dozen plants the whole season? Yeah. So I kind of give up on trying to have a garden here. Just well, like, just like I, I've never gotten a peach off my peach trees. Right, you've mentioned that before. I'm sorry. Well, I'll disappear in one night, and it's like, dang it, you could have left me a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not the way the world works out there. Everybody has hunger pains, you know. Um, 
Just but like how the hungry you're gonna get. I mean, if somebody's hungry, well, eat. They ain't yeah. eating my pets, they ain't eating me. So okay, yeah, you can have the peaches. Dang it. I wanted some. <laughs> I hear you. All right, my brother, we're up to our time. Um, I want to thank you for being in, and I'm, I, I want to give you a call also, though, in the next day or two, because I want to try to do something on the Dark Radio Network project format for a, a YouTube uh, presentation, uh, kind of like uh, in the same, ty same type of format. Now, I know you would be rock star at it and uh, to get that to grow, but I'm going to give you a call. We can talk about that to get that moving a little bit if you're interested, if you're interested in your life allows you to be able to do it or to at least sure. be a guest every once in a while. But it, it's it's just like this where we talk about things of interest, share to the groups, try to get them some information and, um, and so forth. So I hope everybody likes the show tonight. We want to thank you both, Dave and I, and we're wishing everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We'll be around in limited times, but I, I can speak for myself. Um, Dave, will you be available for the Sunday after Christmas? Sure. Okay. So then we'll I know, uh, Chris, I don't do Christmas very well because, well, in my past, my mom died on Christmas Eve. So I kind of just oh. withdraw. But, you know, Sorry, brother. Well, it happens. I mean, her health was bad. And I mean, she was just burned up, you know, and that's when it happened to happen. I know. And, and that's another odd thing. Not that people don't die daily, but it seems times seems at times collectively, a lot of people leave around the holidays. Um, and I, I never quite understood that part. I don't, I don't know if it means anything or if it's all just a thing, but I've always noticed that in my life um, that we do lose loved ones closest sometimes uh, through holidays, like Thanksgiving, hello through Anytime like Halloween through New Year's, it's just like maybe it's just more noticeable at that time of year. It could be. Yeah, it could be. But anyway, to all you admins out there in the Bigfoot uh, groups and all you guys in the ufology and archaeology, I hope we touched a little with something. We'll try to be more diverse uh, on how we deliver a lot of topics if you guys ever want to get involved. Or just give me a shout out if you want to call in and uh, we can call you or I can give you direct message you a number to call in on to be live. Um, that's kind of what we want to grow into on a format um, on, on YouTube ufology and different stuff. But anyway, America beyond and out in the dimensions. Thank you for having us in. We appreciate you. Please follow, subscribe, share through our YouTube and also right here on Facebook from Dave and I. If you don't see us through the holiday, have a Merry Christmas, and we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you, Dave. Have a great night, and best to your fiance. Yeah, you too. Uh, you can give me a call after the show. You got my number. Will do, brother. All right. All right. Sounds Take care. Good. Bye.